Hello again everybody and welcome back to another video. Today's video will be a bit different. I won't be reviewing a figure. I will be reviewing a movie however. Not just any movie, but the Barbie movie. Before I begin, I just want to say, if you've not watched the movie, I, I recommend you to maybe go and watch it, you know, form your own opinions and maybe come back to this review, if you want. Now, I'm a big fan of dolls. Hard to believe, I know. Yeah, people call them action figures, model, kids, etc. But I think doll is appropriate too. So when a movie about the most famous doll of all time was released, I knew I had to go and see it. For the record, I'm in no way a huge Barbie fan or anything. I never collected them or watched the movies. But I mean, as a, as a collector of dolls myself, I definitely have Barbie to thank for inspiring the creation of other dolls, uh, like the ones I collect. I did watch the trailer like once or twice, I think. And was expecting something like uh, a Disney's Enchanted or maybe even Small Soldiers from the 90s, you know. Something light-hearted and fun for the whole family, that sort of thing. I, I'm no movie critic or anything. I just wanted to share my opinion on a doll movie. Anyway, so, uh, was the movie good? It was honestly okay. Like, it wasn't the worst or the best. Were there good things about this movie? Of course, definitely. But were there bad parts? Hmm... Yeah, oh, there will be spoilers from now on. Uh, oh, so let me start by giving a brief summary. The movie introduces us to Barbie Land, a world where all the different Barbies live peacefully in their various dream houses. We are introduced to our main character, Barbie, played by Margot Robbie, and other Barbies like President Barbie, Lawyer Barbie, etc. We are then introduced to the Kens, who just kind of hang around and vie for the Barbie's attention, I guess. I recall seeing one as a lifeguard or something, but I don't know if they have like actual jobs. I guess they're just really playing to the trope of, you know, Ken's being purely accessories to the Barbies. The main Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, is Barbie's boyfriend, and is the secondary protagonist of the movie. One day, Barbie experiences a series of irregularities in her life, like getting flat feet, forgetting her daily routine, and a uh, fear of dying. The other Barbies suggest that she visit Weird Barbie. Ah! Weird Barbie tells her that to cure herself, she has to go to the real world and find the child that is playing with her. Along the way to the real world, Ken joins her, much to her reluctance at first. After a fun montage involving different locations and vehicles, they reach the real world. And oh boy, that's where the problems arise. In the real world, Barbie is the target of like a cartoonish amount of sexism, men openly make lewd remarks, stare and one even straight up molest her. She and Ken are split up for some reason and Barbie manages to find a child. The child however is actually a teenager and a real piece of work. Upon meeting Barbie, she straight up insults her and blames Barbie for, for a whole series of things like beauty standards, capitalism and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, maybe not the last part. She even calls Barbie a fascist? <laughs> we then learn that it's actually the twerp's mother who is the reason behind Barbie's problems. Barbie isn't captured by Mattel, where the CEO intends to repackage her or something. She manages to escape and is helped by the teen from earlier and her mother. The trio then head back to Barbie land. At the same time, Ken is exposed to the patriarchy and thinking is the greatest thing ever, returns to Barbie Land and begins to spread it amongst the other Kens. They eventually take over Barbie Land and assume all positions of power. Barbie arrives and tries but fails to convince Ken to make things normal again. The trio, with the help of Weird Barbie, are inspired by the teenage girl's mum after she gives a rousing speech and they all decide to retake Barbie Land. After pitting the Kens against each other, the Barbies take back Barbie Land and all returns to normal. Barbie and Ken apologise to one another, but the two decide to go their separate ways as they want to create their own lives. The movie ends with Barbie deciding to be a real woman and going to a gynecologist. Yeah, so that's the movie. Uh, now let's start with what I liked. Mm, I know it's a controversial opinion, and I think only I think so, but the casting, the casting of uh, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling was perfect. I know, I know. They could make an $80 million movie about uh, sitting in front of a brick wall for an hour and a half and I, I still see it. Their performances in this movie was great. 
I know I've been seeing a lot of people give Ryan Gosling all the praise and although I wholeheartedly agree he did a great job, I think Margot Robbie herself gave a superb performance as well. Although not as great as the main two, the rest of the cast was um, definitely good too. You can really tell they had fun in their roles and that's great to see. Even the characters I didn't like, they gave it their all. Secondly is how, oh, how, the, how great the costume and set design is. I think it's really good. The costumes, the different Barbies wear is top-notch and visually striking. The dream houses look almost identical to their toy counterparts. Barbie Land really deserves the name and the praise. I think every part of the movie set in Barbie Land was really good. Thirdly, there were, oh, there were genuinely fu funny moments and lines, like really funny. And although not all the jokes landed, the ones that really did were great. Um, ah, lastly, I would say the soundtrack was pretty good, uh, and so were the dance sequences. Now, sadly, the things I dislike. I mean, there's no point beating around the bush, the messaging. For the record, all this is my opinion. We all are entitled to it, thank goodness. I get that a movie about Barbie would have like a feminist message. I mean, I really do. And there's nothing wrong with having a you know, strong feminist undertones and analogy. But my god, this movie really hits you over the head with it. Uh, take Barbie Land, for example. In the beginning, the Barbies are in charge. Ken's being the second class citizens and all. Then the Ken's take over and their roles switch. Like, why didn't the bar uh, excuse me, why didn't the Ken's just kick out the Barbies, you know? No! You have a perfect civilization! Why would you want to add a woman to it? Finally, the Barbies take over again and the Ken's are back to square one. So what, it's okay for the Barbies to oppress the Ken's but not vice versa? At the end of the movie, one of the Ken's even asks if they could perhaps get more positions of power and the president makes some stupid comment and basically says no? What well, are you retarded?! Couldn't they have written something, you know, where the Barbies and Ken's work together and make a better society or something like that? Yeah, I know people will say it's a Barbie movie and it should be about the Barbies. Fine, then don't have this class system BS in your movie then. Next, oh, the side characters. Yeah, some are fine and do their part. But the others, oh, oh. That teenage girl especially whose uh, name escapes me. Anyway, t the moment we introduced her, she's portrayed to be this entitled, annoying little goblin. That speech she gives Barbie when they first meet is the cringiest stuff I've ever heard, man. And her character growth, honestly, like, Comes out of nowhere. One second, she's like, Oh, screw you, Barbie, let's go. And the next, she's like, Oh, we have to help them. Like, what? <laughs> and her mom, although nowhere is irritating, she has this moment where she brings up how she wants a normal Barbie that's more like her. She doesn't want an astronaut or ballet dancer or special forces Barbie. No, she just wants a normal Barbie. Like, do you even know how dolls work? You're supposed to use your imagination. Any doll can be played with or portrayed any way you choose. You have the freedom, no? And there's the, Met, the, Met, what, the Mattel CEO, like, who's sort of like a minor antagonist. He solely exists to spout like, you know, sexist stuff and he's just grossly incompetent. Honestly, it's just... Ugh. Honestly, it's just the human characters. The Barbies and the Kens are all fine and entertaining. Oh, wait, no. There's one character I forgot to mention. Uh, and rightfully so. As he contributes like nothing to the plot or anything. His name was Alan, I think. He's like a Ken, but not really. He's just there, and like the Ken's is treated as an accessory, but when the Ken's take over and he can do whatever he wants, for some reason he's not happy. So like he helps the Barbies take over again? Like what? What does he have to gain or to lose? And the mechanizations of this malfunctioning Santa suit completely elude me! As I was saying. Oh, and for some reason the Barbies also treat weird Barbie like some sort of outcast. They even have this joke about calling her weird Barbie to her face. And Barbie sort of like, I mean the main Barbie, sort of screams whenever she sees her. Uh, but to be fair, I recall one of the Barbies apologizing to her at the end. Okay, I mean, she's so nice and helpful and some sort of victim of abuse if I recall. That's why she's all vandalized and messy. Reminds me of Cynthia from Rugrats. I really like weird Barbie and she's definitely one of my favorite characters. Which brings me to my last point. Wasted potential. I think that if they set this entire movie in Barbie land, it would have been so much better, you know? Introduce us to different Barbies or... Introduce us to different Barbies or Kens. If you wanted that whole patriarchy angle, maybe have Barbie go to a Ken world instead of the real world. And if they wanted that existential... 
And if they wanted an existential crisis plotline, maybe she discovers it on her own somehow. Like, uh, like oh, how, how Squidward realised his life in Squidward got repetitive and boring after a while. Something like that. I mean, after a season of boring superhero movies and low effort, I know, sequels and reboots, I was just hoping for a fun and wholesome family movie, you know? Like Scooby-Doo or some of those movies they made in the, uh, in the early 2000s. I hope Hollywood realises that people really enjoy fun and wholesome movies from time to time. Not everything needs to be so thought-provoking and pretentious. To summarise this movie in one word would be uh, uh, disappointing. I mean, if you like this movie, good on you. People should be able to enjoy whatever they want. Please, if you think I'm wrong or anything, please put them in the comments. I would love to hear different opinions. Yeah, so that's my review for Barbie 2023. Thank you for watching my uh, little rant here. Just felt like sharing my thoughts on the movie. Don't worry, there'll be more normal reviews coming soon. So stay tuned. Ciao.